Hey everybody, good to see you back again. So, quick shout out to everyone watching this episode. YouTube sends us our annual year in review uh, summary about this time every year. I got mine today and yeah, we had a pretty good year in 2021. Um, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. The stats they gave me, 38.2 million minutes watched on the Squatch 253 channel in the year of 2021. 38.2 million watch minutes, four and a half million channel views and 19,344 comments left in the year of 2021. And yeah, that's why I, I only have time to really respond to probably 25% of them, maybe 30%. But yeah, when you think about that, um, that's, uh, that's a lot of time at the keyboard, you know, that it's just, it, it comes along with the territory. And yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that's made 2021 the best year we've had yet. So we're working on an even better year for 2022. Um, I'm kind of, I have a plan in the works to be able to devote even more time to the channel here, make it more of a priority and crank out even more content and try and do better next year than we did this year. Um, yeah, but certainly a lot of growth happening and I can only thank you guys for that. We've got also the member side going. We're fresh off of episode number 50 of Behind the Scenes where we did the full parts cleaning routine, the hows, the whys, the whats. Pretty much covered all of that over there uh, this last weekend. So we're ready to start slamming some idlers back together. But first, uh, we'll get to the main topic of conversation here in this episode. This is hopefully not gonna take that long, but you know, with all that channel growth, comes new subscribers, comes new names that I haven't seen before in the comment section. And along with them comes new questions or a lot of times common questions because you have a lot of people that are bailing on like midway through a project like on 5j 11 13 here and of course you know they're they're gonna have a lot of the same questions that the other viewers had maybe two years ago because you know it takes us a while to get much done around here but when you're building machine back from the ground piece by piece to the last nut and bolt it takes a little bit of a little bit of time but um yeah so from here on forward for those of you that have been with the channel for a while, it's probably gonna look like a rerun. I don't blame you a bit if you wanna bail off, go watch something else. But if you're rather new, stick around. So by far the most common question I've seen in the comment section below the last several 11, 13 episodes is uh, centered around paint. Um, it goes from, uh, so uh, are we painting this thing? And then another one's like, oh, uh, where's the paint? Kind of like the old, where's the beef commercial? And probably my favorite one, in all caps, so we're talking rather loudly. You ever heard of a sandblaster dot, 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 dot. And honestly, yeah, in my time, I've painted more old tractors than not. Uh, some examples, we've got X253. We've got the little Ford 8N. We've got my other D2, old 7066, that I call the Iron Mistress. That was all this thing had. Well, we did it. And most recently, the Farmall Super M. Okay, sun's just about gone, so let's check some lights out here. We have to have ignition on to have power to them. Hit the switch, and there we are. The lights are on. We're not quite dark enough where they really shine yet. Yeah, but you can see. Now, while all those tractors are nice to look at, there's one thing that sets 1113 apart from all of them, and that's the fact that it has its original finish still intact. None of those other tractors had that, so you're really not losing anything by taking them down to bare metal and starting over again. But in this case, when I find a tractor that has, well, 83 years of everything the world has had to throw at it present it's like it's a tangible link to the past it's eight plus decades of wear and tear of nicks of dings of scratches but everything tells a story here and uh, you know my brain's a little off I'll, I'll admit that but i noticed things like the hand polishing around the top of this pinion clutch handle how many times did the former operators go through the steps to start that diesel engine or look i had a fuel leak right here from this flange and it leaked for so long that as the dirt came and stuck to it it formed a layer that protected that paint and that's why it's so shiny yellow right there 
and so dark everywhere else. I also had a leak from that air bleed and the fan kept the front half blown clean, but the wind couldn't get back here. So it just kind of slowed down and then followed the same three trails on down and the dirt stuck to it, formed a layer, protected my yellow paint right there. It says, look at my grill. When the black accents were being applied to the vertical slats at the factory, someone hand painted those with a brush. So those aren't as much brush strokes as a worker's signature. And I look at just the construction of this, the old school look that it has, the stamped steel surround with the expanded metal in the middle, the cap nuts, the stamped steel shell around the core, the stamped tags riveted on. To me, this is a vintage style that just begs for an older looking weathered finish. It's kind of like when you put copper on a building, the whole point of it is for it to turn green. That's why people like it, you know? For me, this is, this is perfect right here. It just matches the look. And the way the receding paint just reveals the different alloys that went into its construction, this breather on the side of the engine, cast iron base, we have a tin body up on top, this beautiful cast hunk of finely machined brass. If that was painted solid yellow, you wouldn't notice that. Just, you know, that's, that's a beautiful piece right there. Just the work and the craftsmanship that went into that. And finally, working around to the controls, you can see the human history that's on the machine, like the wear that's on these steering lever handles, you know. How many times did it take actuating those to wear that much material off of them and the noticeable lack of wear on the main clutch handle? That lends further credence to the fact that 1113 was an agricultural tractor. It spent most of its time pulling at the drawbar, so they'd lock that main clutch in and it would stay there for a long time, but they did a lot of steering in the process. Another thing is this old shifter knob. We worked so hard to save that because to properly disassemble the shifter, you have to unthread this from the shifter rod and that wasn't going to happen without breaking it. And if you broke it, you'd have to replace it. And then that's shiny new. It doesn't match the rest of the stuff. And yeah, we had to get creative. We thought outside of the box. We built some special tools, but we were able to disassemble that entire shifter and perform all the necessary repairs without having to remove that knob, without having to disturb it. Left it all intact. And another thing was the weld repair we did on the main clutch lever because Look at how the paint was worn completely off of this edge at one time. There's only one thing that does that. That's a boot on the foot plate and trousers just barely contacting the edge of that clutch lever for an untold amount of hours. I don't know how long it takes to polish the paint all the way off of there, but it happened. And this represents somebody's living. That's hours and hours in the seat and it's still here. We can see it, we can touch it, we can appreciate it. And for me, just erasing all of those details like that, it's something I just can't bring myself to do. This D2, on the other hand, is one that I would most definitely paint. We are going to be going through this one. It's got some back end steering clutch problems as well. Runs pretty good, rather clean unit, no leaks, but nothing here is original finish. This has had a repaint at one point in time, although this is more yellow than the D2 that I'm rebuilding in the shop right now. It's just not. It doesn't have any stories left to tell. All that original stuff has been erased. It's gone. So, you know, it didn't get, like, the greatest paint job either. There, there wasn't a lot of prep work. You can see by, like, all the peeling that's going on. We can kind of see, like, some primer-ish kind of stuff underneath. You know, it was just kind of a quick, rushed job. It didn't get any of the, the accents on the lettering. It didn't get any decals. You can see, looking at the other side at the exhaust manifold, these were, I believe, like a high-temp silver. Was applied to them they just mob yellowed the whole thing and it burned off where it burned off and that's what it is so yeah this is one that would definitely definitely get a paint job from me besides and we're going back to the personal preference factor again i just like the u-series d2s in fresh paint better than the old j's i i like like that old 5j in there it's like the old guard it's got just the older look to it the older styling these U-series machines, although they're not much newer. This is a 5U4399, it's a 1950, but they're just streamlined just that much more where fresh paint looks nice. I mean, like, look at like the front end, the radiator is all cast housing and it's clean, it's uniform. It has all the mounting points for the factory hydraulic units, the grill guard that's molded just to fit everything. It all works, it all goes together. And, you know, you look at like the old 5Js, they're just, they just have more of a classic look to them, and I just prefer 
intact patina on those much more than like these these u series here but yeah this is one where it definitely needs it it needs a lot of undercarriage work that's kind of why we bought that other uh parts unit it needs some back end stuff it needs you know well somebody backed into something with the rear uh takeouts for the hydraulics caved in the seat tank we'll reskin that we got a buckle on this fender we'll fix that toolbox awesome you know but there's nothing left for original finish to save so we might as well make it look even better so hopefully that comparison helps you to make sense of the rube goldberg patchwork of wiring that is my brain right so uh yeah people will undoubtedly disagree with some of my opinions and that's okay it's to be expected because we all have different tastes different preferences we all see the world through a different lens so to wrap up one other question i see quite often is what is the plan moving forward to protect 1113's finish from further degradation in the short term, nothing. I'll explain. I want to get a couple humid days on these shiny gasket surfaces that I cleaned and also like our weld repair there on that lever just to get some flash rust established. Let that stuff brown in and just erase most of the traces of the repairs that we performed to this tractor. My goal is to have it run and perform like it's new, but not look like it's ever been worked on. After that, though, there are a few things we can do. Now, keep in mind, 1113 is not going to be stored outdoors anymore. Other than probably two to three nights outside at a tractor show per year, rust and corrosion is not a concern for me. But uh, clear coat's been brought up in the comment section quite a lot. And honestly, we're too rough and too brown for that to be viable. And it's also way too permanent. I don't want to apply anything over what's here. Other than, like, say, I prefer Oatrol oil. I've used that in the past. It seals the metal. It does not interact with existing paint. And it can be reapplied every couple of years as needed. So if you keep it stored and keep up on it, 20, 30 years down the road, 1113 is going to have the same finish on it that it has right now. So that's that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter one bit to me which path you decide to take. Whether you're after the shiny paint or you like the rust or maybe you're looking for something more in between, I'm not going to tell you you made the wrong decision on your project because we're all cut from the same cloth. We have common interests and we're on the same team. So, And also, if you've stuck it out with me this long, you did well because I talk way too much most of the time. I'll wrap it up, I'll let you all go. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you back again.